You ready to burn me at the stake? This isn't what I wanted. I'm sorry. Yeah. One sorry son of a bitch. Get lost here, Wayne. You kidding? It's the best ticket in town. Dixie. Uncle Palmer, you don't have to be here. So don't you worry, Dixie. I'm, I'm grateful that you came, but there's aspects of this testimony I don't want you to hear. Just the lies you mean. Promise me that you will go home. Look, whatever you wish, but I want you to believe that everything is going to be fine. You will be acquitted. I feel it. Hey, if you can't trust this lumbago, what can you trust, right? All right, it's time to go inside. You think positive thoughts. I don't know. Palmer's confidence in your acquittal could be senility. And Zach's bravado. What do you think? Go away, David. Personally, I think Zach's to blame for all of this. His overconfidence. You can thank him for the noose around your neck. The one that's about to tighten. Shut up, David. God, go torture somebody hey. else. <clears throat> David, could you please keep a distance? Try Siberia. You might want to watch that temper, Dixie. You don't want the jury to see you at your worst. Can he be kept out? Let it go, Dixie. Thank you for the prep, David. Now find a seat. Good luck. He is entitled to be here until a judge throws him out. Excellent self-control. For now. You are going to hear a lot worse today and throughout the trial. If either of you feel any anger, hide it. Because if you show even a flicker of rage, you will convict yourselves. The DA won't need Tad's testimony. Dixie and Zach out here a few minutes back. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm here to see you. Palmer, whether you believe me or not, I don't like this any more than you do. I certainly don't want to take the witness stand. Well, you won't have to. No. I, I have your way out right here. You see, dead men don't have to testify. How the hell did you get a gun through that metal detector? Plastic. <laughs> well, you know, I keep up, you know. Well, I'd show it to you, except we're not exactly alone. No, listen. We don't want the police bursting in here thinking we're going to break up an assassination. Mama, listen to me. If you fire that thing in here, if you put a slug... In no, here, no, not, not just one. No, I want to make sure of the job. If you do it, you honestly think for one minute you're going to make it out of here more than 50 feet before somebody realizes this isn't a friendly conversation? A smoking hole in your jacket isn't a fashion statement. Do you really think I give a damn about myself? You give a damn about Petey? Uh -huh. This won't make him proud. By the time he knows all the facts, it certainly should. You deserve all this, you know. It's all your fault, all of it. Dixie had to go to Europe to have her baby. I didn't want her to die. Ah, well, she wouldn't die, no. I would have given her the best medical care. Absolutely, she and Kate would have been very comfortable right here at home. But oh, no. You forced her away, yes. And through you, she met Madden. And she handed her baby over to that madman. Well, I lost her once because of you, but I'll be damned if I'm going to let you do that again. Uh, I'm sorry, PC. Your son is my half brother. For some reason, he still loves you. I don't know. So I don't think 
you must stand by. I can watch you live out what's left of your miserable life out of prison. Feel that? Any decency about you at all, a shred of it, you turn that gun on yourself, but you know, you don't, you never have. So, I hope to God, he strikes you dead on the witness stand. This is going to be horrible. With the physical evidence found in her car in the coffin and the eyewitness testimony, they're as good as convicted. Thanks. Session. The Honorable Kenneth Drynan is presiding. Case 783, the Commonwealth versus Dixie Martin and Zach Slater. Before we begin opening statements, I want to thank you for doing your duty as citizens of our fine state. This is a very serious matter. I expect you all to remember that Dr. Greg Madden lost his life and that the futures of Mr. Slater and Ms. Martin currently hang in the balance. Introduce ironclad physical evidence implicating both of the defendants. You will hear eyewitness testimony that cannot be refuted. Will it be enough for a guilty verdict? Absolutely. I wouldn't waste your time or the court's or the state's money. It's my job to prosecute criminals. Now, you may believe after all the testimony you hear, that Dr. Greg Madden himself was a criminal. Keep in mind, Greg Madden is not on trial. And your personal opinions about Dr. Madden's character or your sympathy for Miss Martin's plight in no way justify or excuse murder. Whatever his sins, Greg Madden did not deserve the inhuman torture, suffering, and brutality that resulted in his horrifying death. This was no accident. It was murder. If the state's case were solid, I wouldn't be here. I do not defend people who I believe are guilty. I defend people just like you. Did Ms. Martin and Mr. Slater have motive to want to pressure Greg Madden into giving them information? Yes. Did they commit this heinous crime? I don't believe they did. Now, the district attorney, Mr. Summerhill, talked to you about physical evidence. I will show you that not only is that evidence circumstantial, it's inconsequential. A fingerprint on a piece of wood that could have been obtained from any number of sites that Mr. Slater has frequented. The police can't tell you where that wood was found or even when. He also will make a monumental case of some traces of blood and a few fibers found in a rental car owned by Mr. Slater's casino. Yes, Miss Martin drove that vehicle, but so did hundreds of other people since January 2005 when the vehicle was first purchased by Mr. Slater's casino hotel. What else did he say he had? Uh, eyewitness testimony. The word of a jealous man who wanted revenge against his ex-wife and her lover. Should I ring for the guard? Well, for me or for you, I come in peace. It's a change of pace. I can't find Jamie. I mean, I looked all over the courthouse. I can't find him. That's because Jamie is convinced his father's perjurer. He spends his every waking minute trying to railroad his stepmother into prison. 
If I know our son, he's as far away from here as he can get. If he's smart, he'll stay there. The district attorney has stated that Ms. Martin and Mr. Slater had a strong motive for torturing Dr. Greg Madden. During the course of this trial, you will meet nearly a dozen people with equally strong motive. And I will prove that any one of them could have buried him alive, thus causing his death. Dr. Morris Victor, state medical examiner, to the stand. Dr. Victor, would you characterize Greg Madden's death as peaceful? As far from it as anyone could get. Poor devil was alive approximately two hours before his body was discovered. See what it gets us. I think you'd be pretty good with a shovel, though. Leave the rest to me. With the coffin dug up, you could smell the stench outside the walls of the park. In the construction of the caskets, had any thought been given to sanitation? I couldn't say if anybody thought about it. Could you see any drainage system? There wasn't any. You brought this on yourself. All you had to do was tell me where Dixie's little girl was. What? What, did you want to see her suffer? Was that it? Well, can't see very much from down there, now can you, Greg? You know something? I want you to live. I do. So all you have to do is tell me where Dixie's kid is. Where's Kate? That's all you have to do. You do that, and when I know it's the truth, I will bring you up from your hell. There was only one print from the interior of the coffin that wasn't Greg Madden's. Whose fingerprint was it? Zack Slater's. Uh, we stop spewing water and then it really comes back. We don't stop until we get the truth. When he wakes up, he's gonna freak. Then we'll get what we want. If that doesn't work, we just take it a step further. A desperate plea from his son on the tape. Swing it for me, hope should be real effective. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Slater's fingerprints were on file prior to this case. Because Mr. Slater was charged with another murder just last year. Another murder that he didn't commit. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And do you recall the circumstances of those charges? Do you recall Edmund Gray's death and why Mr. Slater was charged? Slater admitted to the crime. But that doesn't answer the question. People confess to crimes for numerous reasons, coercion being one of them. Do you recall why Zack Slater was indicted? You had physical evidence. Of course we did. All circumstantial. Except for a witness. An eyewitness who lied because he wanted to settle an old score with Zack Slater. Slater confessed. Well, you and the DA were so convinced that he did it, maybe you convinced him too. 
And when the identity of the real killer was discovered, a lot of police officers and public officials had a lot of egg to wipe off their face. Objection. Your Honor, relevance? There's a point to this, I assume? Yes, indeed, Your Honor. I'll allow it. Quickly, Miss Cuddy. Chief Fry, have you ever known a police officer to plant evidence as revenge? Not one of my men, damn it, Libby. Chief Fry, I'm not accusing you. I'm merely you pointing are not out. Miss Cuddy. Client, one of my well, let's face it, Derek, you're not omniscient. Right back at you. Objection. I said it now. I move this exchange be stricken from the record, Your Honor. Duly noted. The state calls Thaddeus James Martin to the stand. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You knew your information could help the police crack this case, didn't you? Yeah. When did you approach Chief Fry to tell him what you saw? I didn't approach him. Whom did you tell? Not anyone in my office. No. How did the police learn that you could help them? The police bugged my house. They overheard me arguing with Mr. Slater about what he and my ex-wife had done. Where is Dixie Martin's child? Why are you being so stubborn? Tell me and I'll set you free. I'm not stupid. And the only reason you're keeping me alive is because I'm the only one who knows the truth. If I tell you, I'm as good as dead. Well, if you don't tell me, you're definitely dead. He can't last. Why did your ex-wife remain in Pine Valley? Because you're here? No. I don't think that matters anymore. The only reason Dixie stayed in Pine Valley was because Greg Madden was here and she needed some information. Did Zach Slater's presence affect her, do you think? Objection, Your Honor. That's a question for Dixie Martin. Put her on the stand. I'll ask her. Sustained. Did your ex-wife confess to you that she and Mr. Slater were lovers? Not at first. How did she first uh, characterize their relationship? She said they were friends, that he was married to someone else, and he was simply helping her to find our daughter. And you believe this? Nope. How long has your ex-wife known Mr. Slater? I'm not sure. The only thing I'm certain of is they hooked up after she came back to Pine Valley. After four years, no secret. Mr. Slater was hiding her in a luxury suite at the top of his hotel, and the rest of us were running around thinking she was dead. We don't need any conclusions about what had happened before you came on the scene or what the defendants did after you left. Simply tell the court what you saw in this airport parking lot the night Dr. Madden disappeared. I saw them. Speak up, Mr. Morton. I said, I saw them. By them, you mean Dixie Martin and Zach Slater? Yeah. They were putting what appeared to me to be a body in the trunk of Dixie's car. Mr. Martin, the police tape of the confrontation between you and Zach Slater do you know where it is? No, I don't. Is that because it's in police custody? No. It's missing. A major piece of evidence? Do you think the police misplaced it? Last I heard, it was either lost or stolen. And who did Chief Fry accuse of that theft? My children. 
my sons, Jamie Martin and J.R. Chandler. And that's really why you're here, isn't it, Mr. Martin? Because Chief Fry threatened you that if you did not testify here today, he would charge your two sons with evidence tampering. That's exactly why I'm here. Mr. Martin, you married the defendant not once, but three times. Yeah. It's supposed to be some kind of charm, isn't it? Yeah, but it wasn't for you, was it? What was it that finally broke you two up? In the end, Dixie felt that the only way she was going to have our child in peace was to uh, get as far away from me as possible. And at that time, there was another man. Dr. David Hayward, whom she was also having an affair with, and he helped her get as far away from you as possible, didn't he? That's right. But then, Dixie contacted you, said she wanted to reconcile with you before the baby was born. Yeah. Then there was the car accident, and I was led to believe that Dixie had died before she passed away. She lost the baby. Only later you found out that you were wrong. Much later. When she finally came back to Pine Valley, she admitted the truth. She, uh, she told me that our daughter... Do told me that my daughter was more healthy. And then she gave her away. And to whom did she say that she gave your daughter to? Greg Madden. You are a private investigator. Did Ms. Martin enlist your help or services when she began the search for your daughter? I wasn't asked. Zach out there. Dixie and I have uh, gone our separate ways. That must be very hard. I managed. But this is the woman that you love? pursued, married three times, and she doesn't even ask for your help to find your daughter. She asks the help of another man who she's fallen in love with. Happens. But this happened to you. How do you feel about that? It's not part of the equation, is it? It's Dixie's choice. It's her life. But it's a life that you desperately wanted to share with her. You wanted to share her life and raise your daughter. Yeah, that was the plan. Obviously, plan changed. Olivia, what do you want me to say? You felt compelled to testify in this case. Yeah, you could say that. It was either that or watch my boys go to jail. You're understandably angry about that. Do I look happy to you, Mr. Summerhill? You've also testified to being angry about Dixie Martin's actions regarding your daughter and Miss Martin's subsequent relationship with Zach Slater. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Has any of that anger or resentment affected your testimony? Miss Martin. Was the testimony you've given here today the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Everything I said, all of it is the truth. Liar! His testimony, every word of it has been a lie. And I can prove it. Do this, Jay. I have no choice. Last night, he was grasping at straws. Do you really think he came up with something that explosive between then and now? I know the truth. I'm going to make you pay for it.